Here we have some of the latest news. October 4th, 2023, Pope Francis opens meeting on future of Catholic Church by saying everyone must be allowed in. So here we have Pope Francis gaining popularity with the world, gaining popularity with the LGBT community, joining in support of their agenda. This is something that i had spoken about in the past. I have a presentation on the Synod on Synodality and also on Sodom and Gomorrah's role in end-time prophecy and end-time events. So this is a very interesting development. Turning overseas now to the Vatican, where Pope Francis opened an important meeting of Catholic bishops today on the future of the church. Among the controversial topics, whether priests can marry or women can become deacons, and if priests can bless same-sex marriages. The Bible tells us quite clearly in the book of Luke, chapter 17, 26 to 30, it tells us that in the days when the Son of Man is revealed, speaking about the second coming of Christ, it will be like the days of Noah and like the days of Lot. In other words, like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so the Catholic Church would have to compromise with Sodom and Gomorrah to gain popularity in the end time world. And we can expect to see more compromise in the future. From around the world, bishops gathering and sometimes clashing on hot-button issues. But the biggest bombshell dropped before the synod even began, with Francis this week publishing a letter opening the door for priests to bless same-sex unions. We cannot be judges who only deny, reject, and exclude, declared the pontiff. So here the Pope using popular arguments of inclusivity, compromising, going along with the world, gaining popularity, will be seen as a unifier and those who oppose and those who stand for biblical standards will be seen as troublers of Israel just as Elijah was seen as a troubler of Israel by the wicked king Ahab. And so the end time able, if we could refer to the remnant church, the faithful church as the end time able and the unfaithful church, the compromising church, the lawless church as the end time Cain. And so Cain will seek to execute Abel, but God will preserve the remnant church. As queer people, we want to believe that God blesses our love. The attack on God ends up being an attack on love. God created marriage between man and woman in the Garden of Eden. It was one of the first institutions he created. Along with the Sabbath, there is a connection between these two, as I spoke about in a previous video. And so what does the devil want to do? He wants to confuse what marriage is. He wants to confuse what love is, because God is love, 1 John 4, 8. And he wants to further confuse what it is to be a man or a woman. Now, we have to love all people, we have to love the homosexual, but it isn't love to lie to people, to tell them that something that is harmful for them spiritually, physically, and emotionally is God's will for them. Jamie Manson, a women's rights activist and devout Catholic, says the change opens the church tent for LGBTQ couples, like her and her partner of four years. Affirming and embracing everyone only makes the church stronger. So in other words, we can improve the church by compromising on God's standards. We can make an improvement by destroying the standards of God. We can improve the church and make it stronger. Well, the history of the Catholic Church is a history of compromise, and the devil conquers through compromise. It is a very slim minority of Catholics who are opposed to same-sex unions. So truth is determined by a majority vote, a majority opinion. Is this how we are to determine truth? Or are we to stand for the truth as Noah did in his world where nobody was in agreement with him? He was a preacher of righteousness and nobody listened to him. Or what about Jeremiah? He didn't go along with popular opinion. So we're supposed to stand for the truth regardless of how popular it is. But, but mark my words what the pope is doing will definitely gain him popularity that's what they wish but it's not father gerald murray is a conservative priest from manhattan for the pope to say that priests and bishops can find a way to do this it's wrong he shouldn't do it 
And so there are many sincere Catholics and many sincere people of other denominations who will come out of Babylon. As Babylon sins increase, there are many who will come out of Babylon, out of spiritual confusion. What's the harm in making this, a, this tent, so to speak, bigger for more people? The harm is that it contradicts Catholic teaching. American conservative leaders in the Catholic Church have warned that if Francis doesn't stick to doctrine, he could provoke a permanent split. In his homily to open the meeting, Francis made it clear where his focus lies. Tutti, tutti, tutti. He said, everyone, everyone, everyone must be allowed in. So let's be clear about something as we talk about this, this uh, story. Anybody, biblically speaking, anybody should be able to come into a church. A church is a place. It should be a safe place for sinners, but not for sin. There's a difference. So, yes, we want to have anybody, anybody should be able to come in. The homosexual should be able to come in. The, the drunkard should be able to come in. The adulterer, the gospel, all people. Come as you are. Come as you are. But if you're going to be a member of the church, now what does that mean? Again, biblically speaking, to become a member of the church means that you have decided to follow Jesus. Okay, so if you say, I'm going to follow Jesus, and Jesus didn't sin, the person who says, I'm going to call myself a Christian, I'm going to call myself by the name of Jesus, is a person who should want to have victory over sin. Now, on the one hand, how do you become a member of the church? Again, biblically speaking, you should get baptized. That's how you join a church. You get baptized. You get baptized into Christ. You get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You join the church because you say, I agree. Now, you should be looking for a church whose doctrines are in line with the Bible, whose doctrines line up with the Bible. And so you're saying, look, I want to keep the law of God. I want to be, as we read about in the book of Revelation 14 and verse 12, uh, I want to be uh, uh, someone who keeps the commandments of God and has the faith of Jesus. So you want to uphold the standards of God. Okay, now on the one hand, the question could be asked, who doesn't have sin in their life? Who doesn't struggle with sin? But there's a difference between somebody who struggles with sin who may struggle with sin, but still correctly identifies sin. If we're going to be followers of Christ, we are to correctly identify sin and to know what sin is, call it by its rightful name, and admit it is sin. And there is a difference between someone who says, I want to follow Christ, I don't want to sin anymore, I recognize what sin is and what it isn't, and I want to follow, be a follower of Jesus. And there's a difference between that and somebody that affirms sin, somebody that blesses sin, somebody that says, no, it's not a sin. You see, when we talk about the affirming church, when we talk about widening, opening the tent, and affirming sin, and in this case, talking about homosexuality. Now you can be a member of the church. You could be living in sin. You could be glorifying sin. You could be proud of your sin. You no longer call it sin, and you could be a member of the church. That's compromise. That's what the priest, the conservative, so-called conservative priest, had an issue with. He was talking about a, a, a doctrinal attack. A, a turning away from what he said was Catholic doctrine, well, ultimately, we should be concerned with biblical doctrine. If a church, and more and more churches are doing this, are compromising on God's standard in order to gain people, that is not, we do not, to, to, to win souls, and ultimately, it's the Holy Spirit that is the one winning souls, but to be vessels of the Holy Spirit, to win souls, we are not to compromise this is a compromise. That's what the concern is here. And that is what the Catholic Church is doing. At least that is what this Pope is standing for. And again, I spoke about this more in previous videos, one of them on the synod and synodality. Compromise is the issue. And you will be, 
if you stand forth for the truth, and I'm speaking prophetically, we're coming to this time. Now, a person may say it won't happen. It's not going to happen. It'll never happen. But biblically speaking, when we look at prophecy, we see a persecution of those that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Christ Jesus, who have the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. They are going to be persecuted by the Babylonian system. Babylon, the harlot of Babylon, the mother of harlots, the compromising church, the spiritually confused church system will work to persecute because it will be said, you are working against unity. We want to bring about union. We want joy. Well, true union does not come from compromise, compromising the standards of God. This summer, Pope Francis called some of his conservative critics in the U.S. backwards. As for blessing same-sex unions, Pope Francis says this shouldn't give the impression that they're on par with heterosexual marriages. So here comes the double talk. Here comes that forked tongue talk. The, the speech of a dragon, that, that serpent-like speech. On the one hand, you're saying you want to bless it. But then on the other hand, why would you bless something that's an abomination to God? So you're working to support this satanic agenda. You're working to support Sodom and Gomorrah, the LGBTQ agenda. You're working to support it. But then on the other hand, you want to turn around and say, well, it's not on par with heterosexual marriage. Double talk and deception. And that is to be expected from the papal system. We look at the image of Revelation chapter 13, the beast of the sea, and what is prominent on the beast? What is one of the things pointed out? The mouth speaking blasphemy. The beast of the earth, Revelation chapter 13, 11, horns like a lamb, spoke as a dragon. The speech, that double-tongued, forked-tongued speech. Still the only marriages the Catholic Church recognizes. Nora? Quite a story. Chris Livesay, thank you very much. Just as Cain worshipped the way he wanted to worship, he offered his worship, but his worship was not acceptable to God. And so faithful Abel stood as a rebuke to Cain. And so what did Cain do? Cain turned and murdered Abel. And so it is that the worldly church, the worldly compromising lawless church, will be the persecuting church.